Hello and welcome back to the Smile and Save podcast brought to you by Serve and Protect Credit Union. Today we've got a slightly different episode for a couple of different reasons. Number one, uh, this is the first video podcast that we've done. So hello to anyone watching us on YouTube. And number two is that we're actually joined by our first guest today. So today we're joined by Rob Lovesy, who's Business Development Manager at Serve and Protect. So welcome to the podcast, Rob. Uh, Hi, first Tom. of all, if you could just introduce yourself, give a little bit of a background about yourself, but also a little bit about your credit union journey and how you ended up at uh, Serve and Protect Credit Union. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Great to be here today. Um, so a bit about me. As you say, I'm the Business Development Manager here at Serve and Protect Credit Union. Um, I've actually been in the sector working in the credit union movement for approaching 15 years now. Um, and not a lot of people will realize that actually that's spread across two different credit unions. I started my career um, as a university placement student um, at Plain Saver Credit Union, where I applied for a, a marketing executive role, which I thought was at British Airways. And then it turned out that it was actually the credit union for British Airways. And then I found that out at the interview. And that then enlightened me into what a credit union actually was. I didn't, I wasn't aware at the start. Um, I then obviously found a passion and love for the movement. And I spent multiple years at Plain Saver where we had a small team. I was working as marketing executive. But the beauty of being in a small team, I was able to get involved in the whole operation, the lending, the finance, understand the, the business model more. And then as the credit union evolved, the team grew. Um, and obviously fast forward now, nearly 15 years, and I find myself a, you know, one of the largest credit unions in the UK. I'm extremely proud to be business development manager here at Serve and Protect and you know, passionate about the work we're doing. Fantastic. So for anyone who maybe isn't as aware, uh, could you just outline who Serve and Protect Credit Union are, maybe who we serve and some of the support that we provide to those people that we do serve? Yeah, so Serve and Protect Credit Union serve an exclusive group, exclusive community of workers so we actually serve the police family, the prison service, the military, the fire and the health services. So anyone employed within those five markets is welcome to, to join and make use of the benefits available via Serve and Protect Credit Union. It's really important, I also add, that we also serve the family members of any members that do join. So um, they have to be living at the same address as those, those workers that I mentioned. Um, but yeah, that's our field of membership. Um, and uh, a lot of the work we do is to raise awareness within those sectors um, and try and support their financial resilience. Fantastic. So the services that credit unions can offer uh, are often similar to other financial providers such as banks, but the way that we provide those services are slightly different. So could you just run us through some of the unique benefits and the unique ways of working that credit unions have that they can bring to the communities that they serve? Yeah, well, what stands out for me in terms of uh, the credit union and the credit union movement as a whole, if you look at our business model, it is essentially savings and loans. We help people save and we're there if they need to borrow. But I think in recent years, it's really evolved, particularly at Serve and Protect, to try and expand upon you know, financial education and awareness. Now, I'm proud that you know our team we take a lot of passion in actually going to educate people about their financial resilience to better understand their relationship with money, to take ownership in terms of building their savings. And also, really importantly, just knowing that they've got an option to turn to, an added option, if ever they need to borrow. Um, we see too many people that turn to dreaded you know, payday lenders or high interest credit cards and this is a lot of the time, this is just purely because they don't know about ethical alternatives that are out there like the credit union. So we're extremely passionate about getting that message out there. Um, in terms of how we're different to like banks or building societies, yes, we help people save. Yes, we lend money. But obviously, in the, the truest sense of the term, we are a, we're owned by our members. We are a financial cooperative. Everything we do as paid employees is about the individual, the membership. Um, we strive to make sure we run the business in the interests of our members. Um, and obviously, at the end of the year, if we make a surplus, um, we then pay that back to the savers in the form of a return on their savings. But we also reinvest it back into new products and services um, into for the credit union and for the benefit of those, those members. Um, 
so that that model you know the cooperative model is not unique but it's something that people just don't know a lot about there are lots of different companies out there that are cooperatives you know think of the cooperative down the road you know think of um you know barcelona football club that is actually a cooperative it's owned and run by its members um so cooperatives are really you know they're great things and it's all about the individual we've got a volunteer board of directors who actually are elected by the members and they make sure we run the company in the interests of you know that membership so it holds us accountable the credit union also has additional benefits that a lot of people don't really realize you know not only can you get a good return in the form of an annual dividend on savings but even their loans you know the loans are the interest is calculated on the reducing balance so the more you pay off on your loan the less interest you're paying over time and also they have no early repayment penalties so if ever you come into money or you want to pay you know a lump sum off your loan we don't charge you the interest that you would have been charged there are these subtle sort of benefits that are out there that actually when people look at the 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 wider benefits of credit unions they soon realize there's there's some real pill there um in terms of our loans as well, a lot of people don't realise that um, by law, you know, credit unions, we're not allowed to charge, I think it's over 42.6% APR. That is the maximum APR credit unions are allowed to charge by law. So when people, you know, look at the APRs of other loans, you know, I encourage people, you know, when they're turning to payday lenders or high interest credit cards of 100% plus APRs, there's got to be a reason that they haven't tried their local credit union. And that must just be through lack of awareness. So I'm really passionate about driving that awareness, making sure people know that credit unions are there for them and the range of benefits that are available to them. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it's a really easy, ethical um, and honest way of of managing your money. And that's what this podcast tries to do as well, is just raise a bit of awareness of of credit unions so people are aware. So back when you joined Servant Protect back in 18, the credit union's mission statement was adjusted to begin focusing on uh, improving financial resilience. So could you talk us through uh, that updated focus and the reasons why financial resilience became the focus of the credit union? Yeah, so when I joined Serve and Protect, what was it, 2018 now, looking back, um, fortunately, in previous years, I'd, I'd obviously been working in the credit union sector and linking in with the armed forces. And... I was preparing for a presentation at Clarence House, actually. So the Royal Royal Household at Clarence House, which was then um, the residents were um, obviously Prince Charles at the time and, and Camilla, obviously now, fast forward, he's now king and head of state. Um, but I was preparing a presentation about the credit union service for the armed forces to some of the senior chain of command. And when I was doing research and prepping for that meeting, Um, it emerged that there was a lot of work going on behind the scenes in terms of the armed forces with regard to financial resilience and their policy and their support for their people. Now, it was the first time I'd heard people really talk about financial resilience. And I realised that it quite quickly linked in to the role of a credit union. So as a result of, you know, that presentation, it really helped me help underpin that, that idea of, what's our purpose, what's our why as a credit union. And it really is, it makes a lot of sense. We are there to try and help people prepare for their financial future. We want them to build that long-term financial resilience through, you know, saving money and a savings, you know, behavior and pattern. We don't want people to lend money or to borrow money if they can help it, because ideally we want everyone to have saved. But the beauty of the credit union is you've got that fallback. There's an emergency option if you need support um through a loan for an affordable ethical loan so yeah when i came to the credit union and we looked at you know the markets we served the police prison military fire and health financial resilience was a really great way to underpin our strategy and you know our our mission going forward the fact that we know if we could play our part to improve those individuals financial resilience throughout throughout their life and their career it would basically mean that they could just focus on their job in hand which we know within you know the sectors we serve they don't do it for the money they do it because they want to make a difference and they want to help people and change lives so you know i'm really passionate the fact that i take a lot of pride in the fact that our members 
you know, if we can play a small part in helping them money, manage their money better and improve their financial resilience, they can do their job to the best of their abilities and they don't have to come to work worrying about their financial position. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where the financial resilience sort of mission emerged from. OK, fantastic. So from that point, then financial resilience became the focus and the financial resilience program was implemented to further support public sector uh, employees. What does the financial resilience program involve and what are some of the benefits that it brings both to employees, but also employers as well? Yeah, the financial resilience program essentially was a mechanism which captured all the great work that we're doing as a credit union, but actually helped market it in a way that was really easy for stakeholders like employers to actually digest and understand and actually um, piece together the benefits that the credit union could offer to their people. Before, we were doing all these all this good work, all these different inputs, briefs, educational um, sessions. But actually, when you try and articulate that to an HR director or a pay and rewards team member, it didn't mean much to them. So actually, what we tried to do was formulate it into a, a nice you know, financial resilience program that outlined different steps of people's career, you know, whether they're recruits, mid-service, or going through their transition and leaving um, the service. We had tailored you know, sessions specific for those individuals to discuss and look into the different financial challenges at that stage of their life or their career. And that just, I think, helped resonate with you know, the stakeholder and the employer to then go, well, actually, I understand now the role of the credit union. Yes, it's savings and loans, but actually it's so much more because it's assisting certain people at a certain time in their life and their career. So hopefully that helps summarise what that financial resilience programme was and, and the ideas behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, quite a unique benefit that credit unions can provide is salary deduction. And I guess that's useful at various different points throughout um, our members' career and beyond. But how exactly does salary deduction work and what are some of the benefits that it can bring to those working in the public sector in particular? Yeah, so the whole credit union model here at Surf and Protect and, and a lot of other credit unions is underpinned by you know, salary deduction or payroll deduction from an employer. And that's so important to our model because of two things. It helps people save. So payroll deduction is actually a budgeting method. And a lot of employers who have payroll deduction maybe don't even realise that. It's actually called a pay yourself first budgeting method. So your money comes straight from your salary and it's taken out and it goes straight into a savings account like with a credit union. And the rest of the individual's money is paid into their current account where they may pay their everyday bills from. Now, for someone that struggles to save, that is an incredibly powerful budgeting tool. Um, so a lot of our members feedback and they love the credit union purely because it just creates that emergency side pot of savings that they only dip into if they need it. And actually, a lot of people even forget sometimes that they're saving. They might come to us in a year or two years. They might get their annual statement and think, oh, hang on a minute, I didn't even miss that £20 I was saving. And now I've got a little you know, side pot of savings that I can spend, you know, take the family away on holiday or pay for repairs to my car. So payroll deduction is a great way to help people save. But also it's a really important thing in terms of how we lend money to people because you know the stats have changed and data has changed over the years. But what's been consistent from my near 15 years in the sector is the fact that you know, when you've got payroll deduction, it significantly reduces the risk of lending to an individual because you know they're in a secure job and the likelihood of you getting that money back as a repayment on your loan is going to be pretty high at the end of the month unless the individual loses their job um, or, you know, might might leave their employment or, um, you know, may, may be off on maternity or something like that, have reduced hours. So actually it gives the credit union a lot of stability and reassurance that those repayments are going to come back. And what that then means is when there are high risk individuals that may have applied for credit with banks or building societies and the lenders decide they're too risky, we can't lend to them. The credit union might look at it and say, well, actually, we're willing to give that person a chance. You know, they want to get back on their feet financially. They might want to pay off some high interest debts and save money on their repayments. And the credit union is in a better position to be able to 
you know, make a judgment call and try and help that person. And that is a real core benefit of payroll deduction with regard to, you know, the business model of lending. Um, and it's fascinating because over the years, other financial providers have recognised the benefits of payroll deduction. And, you know, they've come into the space where credit unions have been serving, for, you know, for decades. Um, but the holistic approach about the credit union, what, again, makes us so unique and different is you know, our members actually save money to then allow their fellow colleagues to borrow it when they need it. And that's all done via payroll deduction. Um, and that's a really powerful message. The fact that some people just save because they know their money's helping some of the most vulnerable of their colleagues who might not access affordable credit elsewhere. And then what's more, the interest they, they pay on that loan goes back to paying a return to the savers that have originally helped them in the first place. So, you know, payroll deductions, you know, fantastic mechanism. You know, I encourage more employers to explore it if they haven't already, to reach out to the credit union. We can explain how it works with our providers um, because, you know, it really does change people's lives. Yeah, I mean, to me, salary deduction or payroll deduction is definitely a bit the biggest benefit to the, to the employee. Uh, but it's clear that there's benefits to us as well in terms of how we can lend and also to the to the employer as well. So really important thing to, to make people aware of. So in response to the COVID-19 pandemic back in 2020, Serve and Protect opened their services to the fire and rescue and the NHS and private healthcare services. And we've already seen fantastic growth here, particularly within the NHS. But what are some of the different challenges in supporting those working in different public sectors, uh, public sector services to improve their financial resilience so if we look at the markets we serve so we as i say we serve five markets they have a lot of similarities in terms of you know irregular shift patterns high stress environments um, as mentioned most of them probably don't do it for the money they do it because they want to make a difference and help people incredibly proud people that do a great job however each of them have their own individuals i'd say sub communities within the workplace um and they and that then leads to different financial challenges if you look at the military for example we serve a lot of non-uk service personnel so people that join the military the armed forces family who come from british commonwealth soldiers that look for a new career new start within the armed forces now a lot of those individuals come to the uk and they haven't got credit profiles they may struggle to get access to affordable credit. And the credit union plays a really important role in helping those people save, but also being there if they need to borrow money um, at affordable rates. Now, if you look at the health sector that we serve, it was fascinating because as we learned more about that, we recognised that it was the same challenge to a lot of overseas employers, employees that came to work for the NHS. They came to the country, they didn't have credit profiles, they struggled to access affordable credit. So quite quickly, you can find a niche within the credit union in terms of who are these communities that we actually serve within our workplaces. You've also got, um, in terms of the military, the fact that there's multiple de deployments. A lot of people change their roles every two years. They might be moving around the country or globally. And what tends to happen is sometimes their spouse, their partners may struggle to, to find or secure a job. Um, so they're moving to a new area, they might be unemployed, they might be searching for work. And, you know, that individual, it can be very, uh, a real strain on their financial resilience, because they're having to provide as the sole, sole provider, they might have families they need to support. So actually, we know that there's a lot of work we can do to try and educate family members about the role of the credit union and the support that's available. So that was two examples, i say, from the NHS and from the military. But then you also look at the police family we serve. And, you know, if you look um, at the salary scales within the police, it's very transparent. All the salary scales for the markets we serve, you know, can be found online. And recruits often, police recruits, often take a pay cut from a previous job to join the police because it's a vocation that they're doing, you know, as a long term career because they want to make a difference. We have recruits that are often struggling to pay for petrol to get to and from work as part of their training. So again, we identify those trends. We try and educate them to say, if you're in this, if this is you, if you're struggling financially, you just need to know what options are available. You need to understand if you're having to borrow money for a short period to fund your training, 
you want to make sure you're going to the places that are going to you know, be the cheapest to borrow from, you know, whether it's a 0% credit card or whether it's an affordable loan from the credit union. You know, they should not be turning to these high interest credit cards or payday lenders. It just shouldn't be the case when they've got a credit union service available to support them. So essentially, there are all these different cohorts within the members we serve. And I think what's really important is in our job, you know, business development and marketing, we have to immerse ourselves within the communities we serve, understand the individual challenges that those members face, and then realise that we've got a great product, we've got a great service here at the credit union, but actually how can we communicate it and make it relevant for that individual at the right time of their life or their career? Yeah, exactly. I think um, as, as credit unions, because our services are exclusively for these people working in the public sector, we can probably find ways to provide that specific support that maybe other financial providers can't. So it's a real benefit for, for people working in these services. So speaking of the people working in these services, if someone's listening today that maybe is employed by the police, prison and probation, armed forces, fire or health services, what would you say to them in terms of why they should join the credit union? And maybe if they've not heard of one before, why should they look into them and, and find their local credit union? Okay, so I would say if you want to make a difference to people's lives, credit unions are a great way because you benefit, because you save and you build your savings, you build your personal financial resilience, but your money is also being used to help your fellow colleagues who may struggle to access affordable credit. And that resonates, that's a strong message which resonates with a lot of people. So that's one way if you actually want to help change lives and play your part. Secondly, credit unions, serve and protect are paying an extremely competitive dividend. You know, even though we're not for profit, you know, we do make a profit and that money we pay back to our members and we reinvest back into the credit union. So, you know, check the interest rates. You might be surprised that you can actually get a better return through a dividend with a credit union than you might be receiving from your current account. Um, so look into the detail. Saving is one of the hardest things about saving is actually starting the habit of saving, okay? And a lot of people we speak to, I say, who struggles to save and multiple hands go up. We talked about it earlier, but through a credit union where payroll deductions available from your employer, it really does help people that really struggle to save, to save money through that pay yourself first budget method straight from their pay. So again, it's a really simple way to build that emergency pot of savings to build your resilience. So from a saving aspect, fantastic. If you're someone that needs to borrow money, I would say make sure you look at those you know, hidden benefits, those additional benefits that the credit union can offer when you borrow money. Make sure you check the APRs, so the interest rates that you're paying on, you know, if you're shopping around for loans, because you might be surprised, you know, if you compare the APR with the credit union compared to external banks or bill societies, because interest rates have been going up externally recently, you probably find the credit union extremely competitive with regard to borrowing money. Also, if you've got existing debt, credit unions can be a great way to actually pay off existing debt and save money on your monthly um, interest. Um, a lot of people don't talk about loans, particularly employers don't like promoting loans. But if you think about it, most people are probably going to borrow throughout their life or their career at some point. You know, if you've got aspirations to own a house and you want to have a mortgage, that's a form of borrowing. So we need to talk about these things. And a lot of people actually carry existing debt, whether it's credit cards, overdrafts, um, pay their loans. We see a lot of people pay their loans. You know, work out how much interest you're paying on them. What are the APRs of those loans? Because you might actually be able to consolidate them all together, have one affordable loan with a repayment straight from your pay and actually save money on your monthly repayments. And obviously, if you save money, you can then use that additional money to save into an additional into a savings account with the credit union, build your resilience. So basically, once you paid your loan off, you're already in a position where you've got some savings behind you. So there's just, you know, a couple of things that I'd say to people if they wanted to, you know, how they wanted to benefit from the credit union. Perfect. Thank you very much. And finally, just to wrap it all up, to any public sector uh, employers or decision makers that might be listening to this, why should they reach out to Serve and Protect Credit Union to help support uh, the financial resilience of their employees and their colleagues? What I'd say is this. 
in their role, what I find is sometimes a lot of senior managers who are decision makers with regard to free employee benefits, just like the credit union, they're probably well paid for the roles they're in. So sometimes they may not empathise with some of the financial challenges that their workforce actually face on a day-to-day basis, like the example of police officers struggling to pay for petrol to get to and from work. So what I'd say is be open-minded, reach out to the, whether it's our credit union or another credit union, I think you'll be fascinated to learn about the products we offer and actually the important role we're playing within those sub-communities of your workforce. We've got an incredible incredible team that are really passionate about what we do. Again, working for a not-for-profit, similar to the markets we serve, people don't work for credit unions to get rich. People do it because they want to help people and make a difference to people's lives. You'll get that from the team within the credit union. They will work with you as an employer to try and find solutions to help the financial challenges that your people face. You know, the, the members we serve, they're not blessed with pay rises every, every, every year. It's just not a reality. The money's not there. So we can help them find other ways to save. Um, and what does that mean for them as an employer? People are more focused on the job in hand. You know, it will probably improve their relationships at work and their relationships at home, because we know finances play a really important role. And sadly, we see the data, you know, within a lot of the markets we serve, um, you know, death by suicide, the stats are there, the data's there. And usually finances can play an important role in that, in terms of that impact. So if we can try and alleviate some of that stress and just change, you know, one person's life, we've made a difference. So yeah, please, I'd encourage them to reach out. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you to everyone for listening to this episode, whether you're watching along on YouTube or listening elsewhere. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit subscribe so you stay up to date with all of our latest video episodes. And if you're listening uh, on other podcast platforms, be sure to hit subscribe or follow just to stay up to date with all of our latest episodes. Thank you very much for listening to the Smile and Save podcast today. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Cheers, Tom. Thanks, everyone.